What? Yeah, it is. Oh, wow. Okay. This could be a personal best. Well, one thing is for certain, and that is that summer is definitely coming to an end here in Australia. The mornings are getting a lot colder and it's becoming harder to wake up in the morning. But you can't complain when you have an absolutely beautiful morning like this. There is no wind about and this fog is just starting to lift off the water. So I reckon it's about time to get out there. Hey, we're out here. What an absolutely cracking morning. All right, so we're out here now. I've just got my little combo. I'm just gonna rig it up now, but I'm actually just thankful to be out here this morning. Um, I have a pretty scary slash unusual story, which I might go into a little bit later on, but for now, we'll just rig up the rod, choose our plastic of choice, and get into the fishing. Okay, the first lure we've tied on this morning is a soft plastic. So this is the two and a half inch Z-Man Grub in motor oil. This thing right here is probably the most talked about and used soft plastic in all of fishing. So we'll start off using this this morning. We have it rigged up on a 1 8 jig head. Um, I've chosen to go with soft plastics over hard bodies or surface because it's really cold this morning. So I think the fish might be a little bit shut down. So I feel like the soft plastics will give us the best chance. And what we're actually gonna start off targeting this morning there's just some fallen down trees and some snags along the bank and then we'll move on to some rock walls and make our way down to the entrance of this little estuary. A little bit of a slow start so far but that is to be expected when I'm fishing a new system. Um, there's a lot of fish on the sounder and there's tons of bait fish around so there's good signs it's just about finding and locating those feeding fish. So we're just going to make a little bit of a lure change so we've changed profile to a little paddle tailed soft plastic. This is a slim swim two and a half inch in bad shad. I've done really well on this soft plastic in different systems so I'm hoping that we can replicate that in this one. There we go. Just sounded that fish up. Oh, that's a good one. Yes, we just sounded a bunch of them up. Oh, he's going nuts. There's a fair few of them. He's got a lot of head shakes. Heaps of head shakes. It might be a brim. That is the first good fish of the morning. We've caught one little salmon. Now this fella. Told you these slim swims have been working a treat for me. That's a pinky. I actually had a feeling it was gonna be a snapper. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Tell you what, they would almost be legal. Oh. <laughs> Not exactly what we're after, but that is a nice little pinky. The water's so dirty, what is he doing up here? Okay, so there's that little slim swim right there, that bad chad color always does well for me. And then there's that pinky. <laughs> Ooh. He would be very, very close to legal. In fact, I would call him legal. He's about 30 centimeters, this fella. So let him go. Well, that little guy wasn't exactly what I was expecting to catch first up, but he would have been a legal pinky, so that's a good first catch of the morning. As I said, there's tons of bait fish, tons of life on the sounder, what I'm sounding up, so I'm pretty confident we'll run into our target species of some estuary perch and brim. There we go. That's a fish. Out in that deeper water. Oh, that feels very good. What? Whoa. This will be a big perch if it is. Another snapper. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, it is. Jeez, they pull hard, these things. Got him. That is a beautiful little bycatch. Let's let him go.
So yeah, mate. Now, as I said to you guys earlier, I actually had something pretty scary happen to me this morning. So I live in a fairly rural area and I was traveling down one of my local roads and I always leave my house before the sun comes up and try to get at my fishing spot by first light. Kind of to set the scene. So I was traveling straight down this road which eventually veers off and goes up a hill. And then on the side, there's this little tiny side street. And then I noticed that when I was driving, this car had its lights on, but it was just sitting in this little side street. So at first I was kind of like, what's going on? So I eventually made my way a bit closer and this car was still sitting in that same spot with its lights on. And I probably got to about 40 meters away. And then all of a sudden it slowly started to roll out of that spot and just turned its lights off. Now at the time, I didn't know if it had gone up, up the hill because there's a hill right there. So I didn't know if it had gone up the hill. I didn't know what was going on. But then I probably got to about 30, 25, 30 meters away and I saw the car sitting in the middle of the road with no lights on. So at this point, I to myself. I just slammed on my brakes. I had, my, had a coffee on my lap. The coffee went all over me. I had stuff in the passenger seat. It flew to the front. And yeah, I slammed on my brakes, like pretty much almost went to a complete stop. And then two people jumped out of the car. So at this point, you know, I was like, nah, no way. Like, I've got to get out of here. So I quickly just accelerated, went half off the road, half on the road, and just took off around them and just continued up going along the hill. And yeah, it's probably one of the most scary things, like, what's, what's ever happened to me. I didn't know what they wanted or what they were going to do, but I'm just glad that I got out of there. So anyway, that's my little story for the morning. Um, just, yeah, not a good one, but obviously we're out here now and I'm fine. Uh, I'm just a little bit freaked out by it all, but we're out here now and we've caught a few fish. So that's calmed my nerves a little bit. There we go. On again. <laughs> that's another pinky. That is another pinky for sure. That was right after I got done telling my little story. <laughs> See ya, mate. Oh, we're on. Whoa, good fish. I just had a couple hits and we finally hooked up to one. What? This feels pretty heavy. Four pound. Might be another pinky, but wow. Either way, still a very good fish. Come on, I'm praying it's something different than a pinky, but it's feeling pretty pinkish. It's pretty heavy. Oh, what is that? Is that a big brim? I think it's a big brim. Yes. Yeah, it is. Oh, wow. Okay. This could be a personal best. Are you serious? I had one hit and I was like, wow. Okay. This is big. I had one good hit and this fish has came back, I think. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. That is a PB brim, I'm pretty sure. Are you serious? Look at the size of that brim. What? That is a new personal best. Have a look at that two and a half inch motor oil grub. And that's why people rave on about it, because it catches fish like that. Are you serious? What? Let's get a measurement. 43 centimeter brim to the tip. Oh, that is just, that is what you want. That's a giant, giant brim. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Guys, just look at the fatness of this fish. That is what you call a real, real brim. 43 centimeters to the tip. Look at that. That's my new personal best. That's a big, big brim. One last look. What an absolute brute of a fish. Personal best. Let's get it going. Yes. Oh, how good was that? Oh, we're about to be rock bound. How good was that? <laughs> oh, that has definitely cheered up my day. That is unbelievable. Third, no, not a 30, what am I talking about? 43, 43 centimeter brim.
My personal best before that was like a 40, and I never caught one over 40 in Victoria. So 43, we've done it. All right, everyone, so I think I'm gonna call that a day. So we ended up with the four pinkies, which was a bit of a surprise. We caught four pinkies all above 30 centimeters, and of course, we smashed our personal best brim. And if you guys enjoyed this one, then give the video a like, comment your thoughts below, and subscribe for more videos in the future. Anyway, guys, I'll see you in the next one.